Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. It's not just knowing about the doctrine in the Bible. That is not what we stand for here. Streaming powerful, biblically-based messages live and down the internet. This congregation may never be gathered together again as we see it. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. Good evening. Welcome to Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. We are streaming live down the internet from London. This show is dedicated to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. On tonight's show, we will continue to discuss the subject, the third angel's message. We will be studying what the Bible teaches. Our guest speaker is based in Maryland, in the United States of America. More about our guest after we have had some music. That never fears Can you imagine that? And the only tears we weep Are tears of joy Every hunger satisfied And every baby's cry Would be heard A soul that never grieves Can you imagine that? And a father never leaves his child alone The darkness has no power No desperate lonely hours To make it through until the morning light And we would see the hope with each sunrise In a perfect to try is never far away every man would know his call and something in us all would long to see a wounded spirit healed and live to see a brother's dream fulfilled in a perfect In a perfect world, there would be enough love to go around somehow. And peace would be the sweetest sound on earth in a perfect world. question life would last forever and God would bind our hearts together now wouldn't that be heaven in a perfect world there would always be a second chance In a perfect world, there would be enough love to go around. 
third angel's message. We will continue to discuss this subject tonight with Elder Ray Ricardo. Have a pen and paper ready to write down some notes. Let's now call Elder Ricardo and see if he's available. Hello? Hello. Good evening, Elder Ricardo. You are live on Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. How are you keeping this evening, Elder Ricardo? I'm fine, John. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Well, Elder, tonight we will be discussing these questions together. Who is the beast? What is his image? How is this image given life? How does the image speak? And why are men called to worship the image of the beast? So, Elder Ricardo, before we start our discussion this evening, shall we have a word of prayer together? Mm. Our Father in heaven, once again, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity we have to take this time to meditate upon a very important subject. I know there's much to be seen and understood in regard to the nature of this important message, and I pray you'll bless John and I to speak the words in a very simple, clear manner that all may understand. Now grant us, I pray, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. May your angels watch over us, and through Christ our Lord, forgive us of our sins. Now bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Elder Ricardo, who is the beast? Well, you know what, John, I tell you what, I was um, very happy to um, listen to the previous uh, week's message regarding this message that you started. Um, and I thought uh, when I listened to it, it was so deep and broad and, and clear. I don't see how anyone could misunderstand the clarity and the certainty of that message. And as we continue as we talk about you know dovetailing into that uh, first part and i would by the way recommend all of the listeners who may not have had a chance to listen to the first part of that series please go back and uh and uh, and listen to that message because you're going to greatly be blessed along the way but we're really what we're talking about here john is uh, john for or john uh, revelation 14 yes. we're looking at verse 9 and, uh, and, and uh, it states the following. And the third uh, angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. And then in verse 10 talks about the wrath of God. Yes. Um, you know, this beast power, there's no question about who this beast power is. Because when you look at the context of this third angel's message, um, there, it's very fascinating when you look at the, all the identified marks. The only thing that you can look at, if you pay um, very interesting. He says, if any man worship the beast, and that's a key phrase, that worshiping of the beast, because if you look in Revelation 13, for example, yes. and uh, you look here in verse, uh, well, let's look at verse 12 just for a moment here, Revelation 13, 12, and this is referring to the second beast of Revelation 13, but it says, he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed so yes. it's very fascinating when you look at the who is this beast power in the third angel's message that god is warning us not to worship it's the one that you find that the second beast power is causing the world to worship and there's and when you look at uh, as as you did last week and the clarity of all those identifying marks you gave out of daniel and revelation there's no question who this beast power is it's yes. the papacy yes It's as simple as that, isn't it, Elder, really? Well, it is, John, because I think when you, like I say, I, I, I'm going to go back to last week's message because uh, we're really dovetailing into it. And you laid the groundwork ever so uh, well, and I do give glory to God for that. But I tell you what, the, it's clear, it's simple, it's the, the all the identifying marks that are laid out in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, for example, that yes. was the really one you were going for. And then, of course, when you look at Revelation 13. And so when you look at all of these identifying marks, when you 
put together the 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 amount of evidence that that, that uh, both the prophecy and history has verified uh, yes. this to be so uh, there's no question about who who God is is uh, uh, telling us um, uh, about in in this cha- in this chapter in this verse and warning us not to follow in the footsteps of so yes yeah i think it is very clear yes it is and again listeners we'd encourage you to go back and listen to last week's broadcast through the podcast and to take your Bibles and to study your Bibles for yourselves. All that Elder Ricardo and I and all who come on this show are doing, we're just acting as God's servants to reveal his word to you, for you to study and to ask God to teach you for yourself. So we've established that the papacy is the beast that's mentioned in the third angel's message in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. Now, yeah. Elder Ricardo... What is his image? Now, again, this is uh, uh, it's so uh, fascinating because, again, I, I, I'm going to uh, really be pushing the, you know, last week's message because you really, you know, the Lord blessed. Oh. But I'll tell you this. I want our readers to look very carefully as we're looking at Revelation 13. You have the first beast, verses 1 to 10, and then verse 18 applies to the first beast. And then when you look at the second beast, that's verse 11 to 8, 17. Yes. And you have these are the two key players. All right, let's let's uh, help our listeners. The, th- these are the two key players at the end of time that will literally control the world in yes. every aspect of of life. They're the players. Now, we first beast, no question. All the identify marks clearly point to the papacy. Yes. When you look at the second beast power, there's no question that when you start to look at, again, all the identifying marks. This is the United States in Bible prophecy. Yes. And so when you're looking at these two powers, and again, we, we're going to pick up where we left off uh, just a moment ago. Looking now at verse 11, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The nature of the United States will change from that of a freedom-loving nation to a nation of tyranny and oppression. Now, we're already seeing that transition uh, taking place in a very drastic way. First Amendment obviously being under attack and and, uh, and many other uh, of the Bill of Rights, amendments of the Bill of Rights under attack, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, so forth. But what's fascinating is you continue on to read the prophecy. It says he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Now, this would this would indicate clearly that when you study the history of the first beast, you'll understand the nature of the power he possessed during the Dark Ages, yes. uh, particularly at that point in time, because it, that is the period that you were referring to, the 1260 days, the 42 months, the time times and half a times, time times, the dividing of times. And So when you look at all of those um, um, uh, uh, references referring to the 1260 years from 538 to 1798, papal supremacy, we call it at that period of time, yes. you see the nature of the power that, that the papacy wielded. And the fundamental argument of that position, when you study it carefully, relegates itself down to the position that the papacy was a religio-political power. That's yes. the significance of 538. Let me explain to our listeners. 538 does not indicate the beginning of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church existed centuries before that. What it indicates is a transition from a basically a strictly a religious institution uh, to a religio political institution there in 538. Justinian's decree, though, was issued in 533, didn't go into effect until 538. Yes. At that point in time, it's at that at that point in time there in Daniel seven twenty four, you'll find, for example, if we can turn there in our Bibles very quickly there to Daniel uh, chapter seven and verse twenty four, I'm going to show you that significant impact of five thirty eight Daniel seven and verse twenty four. It says this. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Of course, this is referring to the fourth beast, referring to the uh, Rome uh, under the Caesars. And this says the ten kings, of course, representing the Germanic tribes, the breakup of Western Europe. Another shall arise after them. This is the little horn. This is the Antichrist. And this, of course, referring once again to the papacy. He shall be diverse, different than the first ten, meaning the first horns that went before him. And then another characteristic he shall subdue three of them. So what's interesting here, that word diverse means different than the previous 
uh, ones that went before him, meaning the ten horns. And those ten horns were strictly political. Yes. So why is he so different? What makes him different? And 538 is the significant impact of the starting of the 20, uh, the 1260 days, the 42 months. Uh, and it begins the, the, the transition from a strictly religious to a religio political power. And so when you look at that understanding in the light of Revelation 13, there in verse 12, it says he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, which is a really the unification in church's state, a religio political system that has been in, that, it, that has been adopted, absorbed by the uh, United States, yes. which is, by the way, again, is a violation of the First Amendment. And he says, by that he caused it, that means to compel to force against someone's will, the earth and them who dwell there, and to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So that image, that image that is referred to um, in regarding to the nature of, of the second beast and regard to the first, America is going to make an image. He's going to reproduce uh, the very system, the spirit of the uh, Roman Empire, particularly, or excuse me, the Roman power under the popes, uh, especially during the time of the Dark Ages. You're seeing a unification of relig of church and state. And by the way, just to verify that, just yes. to show you once again, go to Revelation 17. Look at verse 2 and 3. Again, we're looking at the um, uh, apostate system of, of the church. Look what it goes on to say. With whom, speaking again, with whom the kings of the earth, this is the political powers, have committed fornication. Now, that fornication is an illicit union. And what is the illicit union? In this particular context, it's the church and the state. The kings yes. are, are, are uniting with the woman, and they're committing fornication. So you have, what is the image? A unification of church and state, the yes. bonding of the two. And so that's really what you, the issue is here. In, in, and this is why God is warning us in Revelation 14 not to worship the beast and his image, which is very fascinating. That that would imply that the image has something to do regarding the nature of the worship of the Antichrist. Yes, I'm into that. Yes, Elder DiCardo. And so, that being the case now, how is this image given life? Well, again, we're going to continue right on. When you look at what's happening in, in regard to the nature of the prophecy that's been indicated here in the 13th chapter, and you look at the United States of America, it, it, it clearly indicates that America will change its nature. Let's go back to that, what I read to, uh, to you before in verse 11. Yes. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. And then now notice the transition, notice the change. He spake as a dragon. So there is a change in the nature of the government of the United States. In other words, the means by which they once operated on, the basis upon which they function as a government, no longer exists. Yes. And let me explain how that can happen. Now, in the United States of America, you can change the Constitution with, uh, through uh, a couple of means. One of them is called the Constitutional Convention. That's known as a CONCOM. And so what you do is you can have uh, three quarters of the states basically come together and ratify through the state legislatures and agree to the fact that they want to change the constitution. What that means, that that means anything and everything in the constitution is up for grabs once that takes place. Right. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Although that's attempt been uh, attempted to uh, several times, but it's never succeeded. I don't personally believe that will be the way it will be achieved. Uh, there's other ways you can achieve it without having to go through a constitutional convention because it's yes. very difficult to get three quarters of the United States, you know, the state powers to all to come together. But there's a, the other way is through the, uh, the judicial system and through the legislative system. And let me explain yes. what I mean. What, the, what you can do is repudiate the very principles of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, by simply reinterpreting it. In other words, by simply through legislative means uh, enact laws that counteract the very essence of the spirit and truth and clarity of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And you can do that through the judicial system as well. It's called a judicial activism. So in yes. other words, the judges, instead of instead of upholding and defending the very uh, principles and concepts of the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, it through its judicial a activism simply is an enacting uh, or, or they become an act, uh, another form of a, a legislative branch. They are changing the whole system. So basically they override 
the meaning and the purpose of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Yes. And I really believe, you know, how this image will be given life is through those very means. Let me explain. Look, go to Revelation 13, verse 14. And here's the key. It says, and, and, and it says, and deceiveth them that dwell in the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. By the way, this is a very interesting concept because this indicates clearly that Satan is going to have to resort through uh, uh, to spiritualistic means yes. to hoodwink people. It means prior to this, there's a large number of people who aren't going to believe it, who aren't going to buy into it. So he's going to use spiritualism as a weapon to get you to believe his lie because yes. logic isn't going to work. You understand there's no rational way you can think through that uh, and and not come up to the uh, the the the, uh, the conclusion, and that's of course exposing him for who he is. Yeah. So Satan is going to resort to miracles, deception, and then he goes on to say this, um, um, in uh, thirteen he says, um, well let me see, let me let me yeah, so it's it's fourteen, yeah. and deceiveth them that dwell in the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, meaning that's the United States performing these miracles in the sight of the beast, the papacy, saying to them that dwell in the earth that notice this, they underscore this now, they should make an image to the beast, meaning those the people themselves have yes. the power uh, to bring about the change. So this describes the nature of the government of the United States, and that's through through a, a republican form of government, meaning yes. that the legislative power and, and, and really the, the forms of government rest with the people. Um, and so what's going to happen is you're going to see the tide turn um, where the people are going to demand from their legislators that they enact – uh, particular laws that will uh, that will change the nature of America forever, and yes. uh, of course we've talked about this before in this in the second angel's message uh, with the wine of Babylon and Sunday keeping being one of the key pillars of of the wine of Babylon, and you're going to see this take place. So how is the image going to be for, for, uh, you know formed and given life is through the legislative means by 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 they the people demanding that the government change its nature. And yes. you're going to see this. Um, already we're hearing talk of uh, of Sunday laws and various things coming through. Um, it's only a matter of time, in my opinion. I think it's just a matter of time. Yes. And listeners, to give added weight to this presentation, I'd like to share some practical evidence to prove how historically the papacy had slowly but surely infiltrated American politics and society to bring this about. Now, I'm, I'm going to read some quotes from three different books. The first quote that I'm going to read from is from page 237 of a book called The Illuminati 666. This is by the late William Josiah Sutton. Now, as we studied in previous radio broadcasts, the Vatican, through Adam Weishaupt, he was a Jesuit priest. They planned to infiltrate world governments through high-level Freemasonry. Now, as it was, this is what William Josiah Sutton has recorded. As it was during the French Revolution, so it is today. The Illuminists or Communists have penetrated into the high levels of American politics and the high levels of its governmental institutions. Be not deceived. They have their top men posing as congressmen, senators, even presidents, FBI and CIA agents, as well as military office, officers, sorry, and even as clergymen. Now, looking at the influence that the Vatican has had on US politics throughout history, we can trace as far back as the American Civil War. On page 296 of a book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome, the author, Charles Chinnoquy, states about the American Civil War, This war would never have been possible without the sinister influence of the Jesuits. We owe it to popery that we have seen our land reddened with the blood of their noblest sons. And on page 498 in the same book, listen what Charles Chinnoquy wrote, that after 20 years of constant and most difficult researches, I come fearlessly today before the American people 
to say and prove that the president, Abraham Lincoln, was assassinated by the priests and Jesuits of Rome. Now, carrying on to give you more evidence of how the papacy has, has infiltrated and sought to infiltrate American politics. The Vatican has planned to influence and control the Protestant churches in the United States of America. Now, it has planned to do this through the charismatic and ecumenical <coughs> movements. Now, we can read from pages 23, 24 and 31 from a book called All Roles Lead to Rome. This is by an English author called Michael Dissemnium. Now, this is what he's written. The charismatic renewal movement, which began in the 1950s, with so many apparent virtues, had rapidly swept across the Christian world. It was widely seen as capable, with a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, was transforming the whole church. Key figure in the new ecumenical Pentecost was David Duplessis, who played the leading role in developing Roman Catholic Pentecostal dialogue. He was an invited guest at Vatican II and attended all six assemblies of the World Council of Churches from Amsterdam in 1948 to Vancouver in 1963. Now, it says, at the Second Vatican Council, the Roman Church, responding to the heady atmosphere and promise (coughs) of submergence of all differences, gave its blessing to this new movement of the Holy Spirit. Cardinal Augustine B., Jesuit confessor to Pius XII, key figure behind the aging Pope John XXIII, and destined to do more for the ecumenical movement and the interfaith synthesis than perhaps anyone else pointed the way ahead. He said the church must first strive to revitalize its own inner life so that it can be manifested to our separated brethren, that's who the Catholic Church called other churches who are not with them, an ever clearing image of Christianity according to the gospel. Finally, American evangelical David W. Cloud takes an entirely different view of what's going on. From Rome's perspective, there could not be a more effective instrument towards the agenda set forth by Rome, which is building up the Catholic Church and re-establishing Catholic dominion than the gullible, misled, charismatic movement. So you see, listeners, we've given you three sources to show how the Bible has historic, has accurately recorded the historical movements that would happen in the United States, how the papacy would infiltrate politics, and as Elder De Carlo said, through legislation, surely it's been preparing the ground to make sure that the US makes an image or a reflection of its system of government. And so, how does the image speak now, Elder De Carlo? Well, again, we're going to just continue on because the prophecy clearly indicates in Revelation 13 there, if you look with me now in verse 15, okay? Yes. So in, in verse 14, we have clearly the image, uh, you know, being formed. Um, they, the people, will be the key key element to, to uh, forcing the hand of legislatures, you, you know, putting the pressure on, as we say. But then it goes on to say, and he had power to give, this is verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Yes. Now, the image of the beast should both speak, and as it speaks, it forces. Now, that's what it means, cause. So, in other words, this act of speaking carries with it um a penalty in other words a, uh, it's it, it has some force yes. in society and uh now when you look at the the um, all the identify marks to the verses we've been reading this is no doubt when legislation is enacted yes through the legislative means of of congress and by the way, to our listeners, this just won't happen in the United States. It's yes. going to happen all over the world. Every government of the world is going to follow suit. Now, I'm going to explain to our listeners, because remember what it says in Revelation 13, there in verse 3, just to remind everybody, the latter part of verse 3 says, and all the world wondered after the beast. That yes. means even though it starts in the United States, it will eventually, like a domino effect, just begin to pass through all the countries of the world 
the whole world is going to wonder after the beast. So yes. this isn't just a, a problem in the United States. It's going to be a problem for the world at large. Yes. Uh, and so it's through the legislative means. And that's how a government speaks. That's how, it, again, this is just a metaphor. It's just something to help us you know, understand the concept that God is trying to convey. That what's going to happen is an image is going to be formed. The people are going to put pressure on the government to, to enact Sunday laws and to change the Constitution. They're going to do it by repudiating the very principles of, that, of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And in so doing, through legislative means, they will enact laws that will cause people and force them to come along. There'll be penalties, as such as it says here in verse 15. Uh, there's going to reach a point that they will attach to the laws a death penalty. Yes. Um, and so that's how the government is going to pull it off. It's going to be through legislative means. Yes. And now, Ricardo, as the Bible says, this beast, the second beast, as it says in Revelation in chapter 13, verse 11, it comes up. It has two horns like a lamb, but it speaks as a dragon. And as we had studied before, the, dr the dragon is symbolic of Satan. So mm -hmm. therefore, these <coughs> laws are satanic, aren't they? They're not biblical. No. No. Very good point you bring. And I love the way you dovetail it into verse 11, because that's the whole point. Yes. The origin of, the, of, the, of, the, of this spirit that uh, that is speaking through the legislative body is the spirit of satan you see because god doesn't force you to do anything god no. doesn't make you do anything you you have the freedom to choose uh, the path that you wish and in this particular case satan knows he's lying satan is a deceiver he's the father of all lies yes. and so he hates humanity we're made in the image of god and he's doing everything he can to blot the image of God out on the face of humanity. The problem is at this point in time in prophecy, what, they, what his problem is, and I mean Satan now, what his problem is, there's a little group of people called the remnant church yes. who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. They refuse to bow the knee of ba to Baal. They're holding on faithful and true by keeping the commandments, with, and, and particularly the Seventh-day Sabbath, because that's the sign of, of, of demarcation between those who serve God and those who serve him not. And uh, and so this is where it, it's coming down to. He's, he figures if I can't make you, or excuse me, if I can't uh, persuade you, if I can't uh, convince you, if I can't uh, through supernatural means uh, delude you into believing this or going along with it, I'm going to use force. And that's the last resort. And so this this is really proves it. And you're right, John. It goes right back to the speaking as a dragon through legislative means. Yes. And listeners... You see, the Bible has explained to us why we have these oppressive laws becoming more and more apparent upon this earth. It's not God, it's not the Lord. It's Satan that's working through men and women. We don't know whether knowingly or unknowingly, but either way, this is the reason why the laws are becoming so oppressive and why life is becoming so hard, you see. And God is, through his word, trying to explain to us and reveal to us what and why things happen on this earth. There is a great controversy. There is a battle between good and evil, light and darkness. But we've got to realize who it really is between. It's between Christ and Satan. And now this moves us on because it's about worship and why are men called to worship the image of the beast? Mm. Now I'll tell you what right now listen this is the this is the heart and soul. Yes. This is what Satan really wants. This is what it's all about. So let's go back to Revelation 13. Let's look now in verse 4 because we're going to highlight everywhere where it talks about that. Now look what it says here in verse 4 and they yes. worship the dragon. Now this is the key and who's the dragon? It is Satan. And they worship the dragon who gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast and who's able to make war with him? That's yes. verse 4. Then you go to verse 8. It, re it says it again. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Then you go over to verse 12. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them who, who dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Go over to verse 15. 
Yes. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and his cause is that many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And you go back over even to chapter 14, 9. He tells you a warning. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So multiple times you find within these two chapters, yes. a warning, an admonition. You know, uh, and and God's showing they're they're going that the ultimate goal is Satan really getting you to worship the Antichrist. But remember, when you worship him, you worship Satan. Yes. That's who really you're worshiping, because that's the whole point of, of Revelation 13 there in verse four. They worship the dragon. That's really what it's about. They worship Satan. Yes. And uh, and so this is really the key. And so, you know, why? Why are men called to worship the image of the beast? Look, the great contest, uh, and this is what our listeners need to understand, the great contest is between Christ and Satan. Yes. This controversy, this is the issue now, will climax uh, when you start to see Sunday worship being enforced through the legislative means. And that final test will come to all mankind, not, not, not just us. It's yes. going to come to everybody. And now they have to choose now at that point in time, they're going to have to choose between the Sabbath, which is a sign of the loyalty of God, yeah. or they're going to have to choose Sunday, which is the mark of papal authority, which fundamentally relegates itself down to the issue of Satan worship. And that's really what it comes down to. Because yes. remember, Mithraism, which is a pagan form uh, worship of the sun God. And then everybody knows if you study a little pagan uh, history in terms of the history of pagan religions, you know that the sun uh, is always depicted as as the the symbol of Satan. Yes. And so so this is really where it comes down to. It's between Christ and Satan. It's between Christ and Satan. And uh, and we're going to have to decide who we're going to worship. Yes. Yes, most certainly, Elder Ricardo. Well, Elder Ricardo, we're going to have a break with some music and come back with some closing thoughts. i 
the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky the love of God how rich and Third Angel's Message. Elder Ricardo, closing thoughts for this evening, please. Well, today we looked at the image of the beast and all that is entailed regarding that because it's um, a critical moment in the uh, prophecy of Revelation uh, 14 of the uh, Third Angel's Message. And we're looking uh, uh, at the the very means by which Satan will uh, achieve that objective. But it really relegates itself down as we just about talked about uh, the issue of worship. It comes down to that. It really comes down to the issue of where your loyalty lies. And um, the decisions you make today um, really determine the outcome of tomorrow. And I pray that our listeners will remember and heed the words of Christ uh, and the warning of the third angel's message that uh, it's all about worship and i pray you will worship jesus christ and not the antichrist but again it all comes down to the decisions you're making today and so i i want to leave our listeners with the uh um, the, the appeal the admonition of god and to give their hearts to jesus christ and to preserve their lives in him in order that they might be able to stand in that great day amen Shall we end with a word of prayer now, please, Elder DeCarlo? Yes, let us pray. Father in heaven, once again, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity we have to come to share with these wonderful listeners as they come to hear the words of life. Please bless each and every one, and I pray that you'll help us all to see and understand the truth as it is in Jesus. So bless us now, and help us, dear God, to be faithful and true, like Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, who before the image was ever set up, stood faithful and true in the little things of life. And when the great test came, they were willing to give up their lives uh, just so they could remain loyal to you. So bless us now, we pray, and baptize us with thy spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Elder DeCarlo, thank you for joining us on Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. Listeners, if you have any questions or if you would like more information, please send an email to inquiries at wildernesspublications.org or you can send a text message to 07944 062 786. If you live in the United Kingdom, please contact us with your name and address and we will send you a free bookmark called The Third Angel's Message. If you have the Android app for Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio, Go to the ebook section, then find the title Bible Readings for the Home. At chapter 52, you will find the subject, The Third Angel's Message. This chapter will give you more information about today's topic. You can also listen to and download our radio show podcasts at https colon forward slash forward slash voice dash in that's i n dash z that's t h e dash wilderness dot podcast page dot i for india or for omega forward slash on next week's show we will continue to discuss the subject the third angel's message well that's it for tonight's show until next week good night god bless voice in the wilderness internet radio enlightening the world every week
It's not just knowing about the doctrine in the Bible. That is not what we stand for here. Streaming powerful, biblically-based messages live and down the This congregation may never be gathered together again as we see it. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week.